Good morning and welcome to Bahamas at Sunrise. Happy Good Friday to you. I'm Anastasia Palacios and of course it is a pleasure to be in your company on this holiest of Fridays. Well I hope it has been a wonderful week for you. Uh, for those that are Anglican or Catholic and participate in the myriad of services, keep going. You've still got two more, more days to go. Uh, certainly I know many people gathering into churches later this morning uh, through no matter the denomination as Christians, as they look back on what of course is this Good Friday. Uh, my daughter asked me recently about this week. Of course, she's only four now. So she's just truly understanding what these days mean or trying to grasp it as much as I can. And so explaining this to a four-year-old has been quite the challenge. Um, but I explained to her that we call this day good because it was the day that brought us into one accord with who we believe to be our savior. And so we hope that you get to enjoy this Good Friday, that it is good to you, that you get to remember the goodness of God, if in fact this is your faith and see him in all the little ways that he shows up and the big ways every single day. And of course, knowing that that is possible because of a day like today. We've got a great show lined up for you and we're looking forward to bringing it to you. Father D'Angelo Bo is gonna be here to talk about the true meaning of Good Friday. We'll visit Greenleaf Farms to find out what's growing there. I will also find out about the construction program at BTBI. And Ian Rogers will give us a sneak peek of his presentation for the upcoming business outlook in Eleuthera. So multiple things happening this morning. Remember that the Eleuthera Business Outlook Conference is happening on Thursday, April 28th. And we have a host of dynamic speakers who will be covering the topic beyond recovery into growth. Of course, we invite you to join us and you can do so by going to tclevents.com. Well, of course, we need to take a first look at weather with God. We burn some back to back holiday weekend. I know many Bahamians have traveled, many to our own family islands. But of course, for those of us here in Nassau, we want to know what that weather is going to look like. So here is Godfrey Burnside with our first look at weather. Weather at Sunrise, brought to you by Bahamas First. What's first for you comes first for us. Thank you, Stan. Good morning, Bahamas. In your first look at Weather Sunrise on this Good Friday, high pressure remains to dominant feature with some breezy conditions, but a frontal boundary to the north, along with some tropical moisture from the south, will elevate rain chances across the islands through tonight. Weather today, variable cloudiness, very warm, with scattered showers, isolated thunderstorms, mainly across the northwest Bahamas during the afternoon hours, high temperature 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Tonight, partly cloudy in mild conditions with a few lingering showers, maybe an isolated thunderstorm, you know, going down to 71 degrees Fahrenheit. And some region highs and lows across the Caribbean, Barbados, 86 and 76. In Jamaica, 85 and 72. In Trinidad, 88 and 78, and the Turks and Caicos Islands, 86 and 71. Across North America, Atlanta, 78 and 53. In Raleigh, 74 and 56. In Miami, 86 and 74. Dallas, Texas, 87 and 63. And Florida, Canada, 48 and 43. Next looking weekend is the weather wise and high pressure continue to be the dominant feature. But you're going to watch that stellar front that should move. Just north of, just south of Grand Bahama on Tuesday, and they'll increase our cloudiness on Tuesday with a few showers, maybe like thunderstorm for the weekend, body sunny and warm, slight chance of passing shower, though time to daytime will be in the upper 80s, at nighttime in the lower 70s. That's what's wrapping your foot, look at weather sunrise. I'm Captain Burnside. Back to you, Star. Welcome back to Bahamas at Sunrise. Today, of course, is Good Friday. It is a Christian holiday commemorating the crucifixion of Jesus at his death at Calvary. 
We've invited the Reverend D'Angelo Bow, Rector of the Most Holy Trinity Church, to help us focus on the true meaning of this holiday. Good morning, Father Bow, and welcome back to Bahamas at Sunrise. Morning, Star. Thank you for having me yet again. Always a pleasure to have you. You always bring um, such tangible and very real examples to what it means to walk this Christian journey at this stage. And certainly we want to talk about the significance of honoring this week, this holy week. Um, before you give us the message that I'm sure the people at the Most Holy Trinity will be sure to absorb this weekend, can you talk to us about the significance of Holy Week itself for believers? Uh, well, Holy Week, it marks the beginning of the final days of our journey towards Good Friday and Easter, and where we trace the final steps of Jesus' earthly life that ultimately led to his crucifixion. Uh, we will, for us this week, we will start on Wednesday at our Mother Church, Christ Church Cathedral, where the Mass of Chrism, where we'll have the blessing of the holy oils that we will use throughout the church's year. And also a time when clergy, all of our clergy, along with our bishops, renew our, our vows. Um, we go from there to Monday, Thursday, the night before Jesus was actually crucified and where he challenges disciples to become servant leaders and he demonstrated it by the washing of their feet and then the celebration and the Last Supper and where we celebrate the institution of the Lord's Supper and then ultimately to Good Friday. So Holy Week is just a full culmination of um, the central acts of what we do and believe as Christians. And then we focus on them leading up into the mother feast of the churches here, which is Easter where we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. And then what uh, Good Friday and Easter services are available for people to attend? If they're looking uh, to come back to church or looking to visit a new church, um, what is happening at Holy Trinity in terms of Good Friday and Easter Sunday services? Okay. Well, we have on Good Friday, uh, we have our nine o'clock liturgy for Good Friday that will take place then. Uh, followed by our annual fish fry, which is headed by our youth department. They're all excited about that. Uh, then on Holy Saturday, we have our service at 8 p.m., which is the light, the Easter vigil, lighting of the new fire, and also the first baptisms um, for this particular time. And then on Easter Sunday, we go back to our regular Sunday morning schedule at 7 and at 9 o'clock here at Holy Trinity. And you can find services at all of our Anglican churches on Sunday morning, a lot of us do the Easter Vigil, which is on Saturday evening, uh, where we light the new fire. And so, you know, we extend an invitation to those who may not have a church home. You're welcome to come and join us as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Certainly. Now let's let's talk about um, your message. It's been appropriately titled The Weekend That Changed the World. Right. Give me some background on that and let us know, you know, where you plan on going with that as you, as you go into this Good Friday uh, weekend and into Easter Sunday. Yeah, uh, when you think about it, um, it's a fitting theme because when you think about good, well, the whole of Holy Week, if mm -hmm. we take everything into mm -hmm. account, Jesus' entire life, his ministry, uh, changed the course of human history. Mm -hmm. uh, when we come to Good Friday, we talk about the celebration around the world. Every, every corner of the world is celebrating and commemorating this wonderful sacrifice of love as I love to call it, uh, mm -hmm. of God towards humanity. And then on Easter Sunday, we're talking about the resurrection. Um, about two Fridays ago when we were doing Stations of the Cross, I asked our people, have you ever stopped and given thought that this life that we live now, um, it is something that comes to an end. It seems so quick. Mm -hmm. And have you ever asked yourself the question, is there more? Mm -hmm. There has to be something more. Well, Easter Sunday, yes, that's the day that reminds us that there's more to life, there's more to our relationship with God, and that is all wrapped up and found in Easter Sunday because Christ became victorious over death and the grave. The grave is not the end for us. And so we have celebrated from that moment on, from the first Easter Sunday, we still commemorate and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it is the symbol of hope. For all of us who believe that, listen, all the troubles and the cares and the worries of this world is not the end of it, but we are journeying towards an eternity. Um, as Jesus told his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. And so how it has changed the world, it has given us new hope, and we live with the expectation of that kingdom that Christ has prepared for us. 
All right. Now, certainly for, for those in the Anglican and Catholic faiths, um, this, would, this is the combination of a 40 a day, 40 night journey of Lent leading us into this, this feast of celebration and the season of celebration. Uh, what, what should be the posture of our hearts as we kind of move into this weekend? Um, how should we be reflecting or considering where we are now and where we hope to be? Yeah, well, you know, how you brought up the 40 day period of Lent. A lot of people are getting, we're winding down now, we're on the home stretch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people have been going through all the temptations with the rigor of Lent and their commitments that they have made. You know, in the Bahamas, we like to say, especially in the Anglican and Roman Catholic Church, we like to say we're on Lent. Uh, we like mm -hmm. to tell everybody I'm on Lent and it um, symbolizes, say, we gave up something, we made some sacrificial uh, uh, um, offering and we've been denying ourselves as Christ calls us to. And, and this whole journey now ought to be about not returning to those things that we've given up. But as we are on this home stretch, it, it should be about how those sacrificial offerings that we have made, how they have helped us to grow and to become more aware of God's presence in our lives, of our deeper sense of our relationship with God and the wonderful sacrifice he made on our behalf and, and just how it has caused us and helped us to be better in our journey of faith and not so much now to say, well, let us over and let us return to the things that we once gave up. And I hope that many who would have, you know, turned away from certain things that it would have been an effort to cause them to move away from things that were not good in their lives and now be in a better place and something, a journey that they can continue beyond land. And so I've been encouraging my members, listen, don't be rushing for Holy Saturday to get back to the things you've given up. I hope that we have sacrificed those things that draw us closer to God and, and make us better examples, uh, you know, as we live on our Christian faith. Indeed. All right, Father, but we do have to wrap up. Before we go, um, is there a word of hope that we can give to those who, who when we hear these terms, don't know what we're talking about, right? Don't know what land is. They know that Friday is a holiday. That's, that's what they enjoy Friday <laughs> for. They get one on Monday. They, they enjoy it for that. Um, many people are still grappling with so many negative things going on around the world and even here in our own country to see uh, Jesus as a savior, to see God as good. Any final words that you want to offer to them as they go into this weekend? Yeah. Um, the, it, while it is a holiday, it, it, was, it is given for us to pause and to remember what Christ did for us. And as you said, there's a lot of people in this our country that are losing hope, that are on the threshold of giving up. But Good Friday and Easter Sunday reminds us that despite all the despair and the darkness of the world, that God loved us enough and he sent his son who died and who frees us from sin. But in a more practical way, it is a challenge for us who believe and who are worshipers of Christ and servants of God to understand that we now have to be those people who continue to make those sacrifices, to be that support, that help, that encouragement for so many people who find themselves in distress, in trouble, and just in darkness. And so I hope that those of us who have journeyed through them and have come to a, a better place in our own walk of faith, we take this as an opportunity to bring hope, to bring joy, and to bring the message of Christ that comes to us in Good Friday and Easter, the message of redemption, the message of love, that we can be the living examples of that, those of us who know and who believe. And so hopefully um, out of this Good Friday and this Easter Sunday, uh, that can be the message that we share, those of us who know. Indeed, indeed. Well, Father, Bo, always a pleasure to have you on Bahamas at Sunrise. Uh, thank you for sharing with us this, this important message that we get to be the light, right? That we get to live yes. this example. Um, and we, we trust that uh, you will make it through. I, I, people don't know that this is a marathon for, for oh, priests yeah. uh, in the faith around this time, <laughs> multiple Most services, definitely. multiple days. Uh, but we trust that you will make it through. And so we can we you. celebrate you in the Church of the Most Holy Trinity. We wish you a very happy Good Friday. Thank you, Star. You have a happy Easter also. You're watching Bahamas at Sunrise. We'll be right back. Our world has changed. Many businesses have been closed for months with little or no access to their customers 
Until now, Rev Media can help you remain connected to your customers. Our trusted customized advertising packages and personalized consultants will provide your business with immeasurable support during this challenging time. Your customers are already watching. Rev Media can help you to remain connected. Call us today. Let us help you. so much going on in the world today, only accepting cash at your business can be risky. Let Fidelity offer you and your customers safety, convenience, and the flexibility of a fixed or mobile terminal. Take it with you, on the move and on the go, because business should never stop. For more details, speak to one of our business development officers at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport. Visit our website at fidelitygroup.com or visit us at any of our branches. Welcome back to Bahamas at Sunrise. Access Accelerator client Antonio Hall has been planting seeds as long as he can remember. That passion has grown into green leaf farms. Our Annalise Thompson has that story. Antonio Hall is the proud owner of Green Leaf Farms, which specializes in growing, harvesting, and packaging edible flowers and microgreens. So we're a boutique farm in an urban community. Um, we specialize in growing high-end culinary ingredients. Uh, so some very exotic culinary herbs, um, microgreens and edible flowers. Uh, and we supply um, those that value those ingredients, right? So private chefs, uh, yacht chefs, uh, hotel chefs, restaurants, bars, um, whoever find the value in what it is that we do, we supply. The day-to-day -day operations of the farm include precise procedures. Day-to-day -day operations, we need, uh, we need, the ground needs to be uh, sort of very fine, um, a very fine finish because of the product that we're dealing with. Um, so it can't be rocky at all. It has to be almost just soil and compost. A little bit of rocks for aeration, um, but nothing too, nothing too heavy. Both edible flowers and microgreens are processed in different ways. On a daily basis, we are here harvesting flowers first thing in the morning. Um, so right after the dew is dried on the, on the blooms, we begin harvesting right away. Uh, we take those flowers inside of our, our post-harvest building. Uh, we put them in the cooler to get the, the heat off of them. And then we bring them back out and we start to package those. Flowers are not washed. Um, because the minute that water goes on them, it's a, they start to decay. So um, the chefs would usually wash them as they need them, rinse them as they need them. Um, most times they don't rinse them at all because there's no dust and snow blooms because at the point that we harvest them, they're not, they're not picking up any dust for the most part. Um, but it can be, they can be washed um, right before use. The microgreens, on the other hand, um, so once the microgreens are ready, so those are strategically seeded by hand. Um, um, but after they are at their full stage, they are then harvested. Um, and then they are put through a cycle, a wash and dry cycle. Um, so we do a first wash to get the initial uh, debris and dirt off. And then we do a second wash to ensure that the dirt is off. Um, and then they go into a spin cycle we use a spinner that was designed specifically for um, drying greens. Um, and then I have a machine that uh, is going to be retrofitted for larger greens. But that's for when we expand and have more uh, space to grow larger greens. Uh, and from the spin cycle, they go into an air dry cycle. Uh, from the air dry table, it then goes um, into packing like to the packing station and from the packing station we go into the cooler so it literally goes from the field to our cooler to the client and that's how our system works greenleaf farms grew as the result of a young boy's fascination with seeds 
uh, as a child, I was always fascinated with um, watching things grow, you know, and uh, just about every fruit that my parents would bring home, I used to take the seeds from that fruit and plant the seeds. Most of them didn't germinate, but some of them didn't. The ones that did, uh, I was able to get fruit from those trees. Antonio's career path included more than just farming. So architecture is a, a love of mine. Uh, when did I leave? I left um, in 2016, um, and it really was to follow my passion, which is, uh, which is the soil, you know. Um, so I took a bet on myself, <laughs> and, uh, and that led me here. Um, but before taking that, that gamble, I would, have, um, I would have purchased this parcel of land that we're on now, and I would have already started planting um, and started tilling this ground and, and, you know, preparing for my exit of, uh, of architecture. I just felt my calling was something bigger than architecture. Antonio received assistance from Access Accelerator at a pivotal moment in the company's development, and the process was intense. At the point in time when I got involved with Access Accelerator, um, I, I was in need of a post office building, which is a parking house, more or less. Um, now, my architectural background allowed me to be able to design this parking house um, to exactly the specifications that I would have needed. Um, and Access Accelerator um, was, the, uh, was the outlet uh, from which I was able to get C funding for this particular uh, phase in my development. Antonio appreciates everything Access Accelerator has done for him and what they continue to do for other small businesses. It's, it's refreshing to have Access Accelerator here. Um, it's clear that they are about helping young businesses um, become sort of more established. And, um, and it's, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be a recipient. If you are looking for edible flowers and microgreens, here's how to get in contact with Greenleaf Farms. We are on social media, right? We're on Facebook as Greenleaf Farms. And we are on Instagram as GLF Bahamas, as in Greenleaf Farms, GLF Bahamas. Um, and they can send us a message uh, and we will give them a cell phone number that they can WhatsApp. We usually take most of our orders through WhatsApp. For Bahamas at Sunrise, I'm Annalise Thompson. Ookla awarded Alive and Rev the Speed Test Awards for Fastest Mobile Network and Fastest Fixed Network recently. Here to tell us more, we're very happy to welcome the Chief Executive Officer for Alive, Mr. John Gomez. Mr. Gomez, good morning and welcome to Bahamas at Sunrise. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, so exciting to hear that, you know, Alive has won these outstanding awards. Uh, I think Bohemians always get excited when we know that any of us have done something prestigious. And this is a very big deal. Uh, talk to us about how prestigious are these awards from UCLA? So when you think about it, I mean, UCLA is the global index in terms of testing the speeds across the entire world. So this is not unique to the Bahamas. And so when you talk about how prestigious this particular award is, this is a, a global index in terms of them coming into this country, they're monitoring our performance of our network and measuring what's happening with all of the different providers. And the fact shows that uh, Cable Bahamas group of companies alive and rev have the fastest speed from both a mobile and a fixed perspective. Wow, well, congratulations to all of you. And you know, there's one thing for you to want to, to do well and to keep doing well and be excellent, which Alive has come in and has been its mandate since the very beginning, but it's another thing when that can be measured. And so that is incredibly well done. Congratulations to you. What do you think is the strength of Alive's mobile network? So, so when you think about the strength of the network, I think one, one measure that you can actually always go back to, and this is something that has stuck and will continue to stick with all of us here in this country, in terms of two, back in 2019 with Hurricane Dory, when that hurricane came through as one of the most devastating and the strongest hurricanes they ever passed through the Bahamas here, and it sat over Abaco and Grand Bahama for several days. And so our network stayed up uh, before, during, and after the hurricane. But even if you fast forward to a few weeks ago, when we had a couple of boaters that left Andres and was going to Grand Bahama, and they had engine failure. And so the authorities reached out to us in terms of uh, assisting them to locate them 
And again, because of the performance, the strength you can um, equate it to of our network, we were able to locate those bodies and to bring them back home safely. Wow, that is phenomenal, right? And so literally the network is saving lives. That is, that is incredibly powerful. And so we congratulate you even on that, uh, outside of being the fastest speed. So that's Alive. Um, and of course, Rev has been with us a little longer than Alive has been, uh, but you guys still managed to continue to, to up the par there as well. How did Rev find a fast, the fastest fixed network? So, so again, so one of the things we have to equate this all to is one, the, the network itself, but also in terms of the engineering teams that we have that support the networks. And so when we go back and we look at the teams that we have put in place to, to monitor, to, op, to measure the operation of our fixed network, it's tremendous what they've done because one of the things, and as you, as you said there, the HFC network, it, it's been in place much longer than the Alive network, but we continue to look at how we can enhance and improve upon that network and we'll continue to do, to do that. Excellent. You mentioned teams, which I love, uh, talking about the engineers that support the infrastructure that you've put in place. And one of the teams that I, I, I actually enjoy talking to because they always resolve my issues is the Alive customer service team. Uh, how does Alive maintain its world-class service? Well, well, again, I mean, that, that's one of our core pillars. When you think about the customer experience, this is something that we had from the inception five and a half years ago. But this is not applicable just to Alive. One of the things that we do across the full group of companies is uh, there's something called NPS, which is our net network net promoter score. And so what we're doing with that is that we're constantly getting feedback from our customers to determine exactly what experience that they have and what we can do to enhance and to improve upon that. And so we continue to look at ways and means in terms of ensuring that that experience across both the fixed and mobile network are extraordinary. Wow. And, you know, what is Revs and Alive? I guess the Cable Bahamas group of companies would be the better title for this one. What is your company's commitment to its customers? So first and foremost, we appreciate every one of the customers that we, we have. And so as we continue this journey with our customers, we will continue to look at ways in terms of how we can enhance the existing services that we have, improve upon those, and to continue to look at innovative ways that we can continue to provide services to them and not just the products. I think one, most times you think about the technology or the products themselves and the devices, but also the experience, the overall experience when they walk into a retail center, when they pick up the phone and they contact us, we want to make sure that the experience that they have, they will be, you know, they leave that store or they leave that conversation knowing that we totally care. And this is a good segment when we talk about community service, because that's another segment of our business that is then ingrained into everything that we do and giving back and being a part of the fabric of the community. Excellent, excellent. Now, I know that there's always something on the go, right? Both at Rev and Alive, there's always something new in the works, especially uh, your new mobile apps. Um, I've heard, I'm hearing some talk on the street about smart home, telemedicine. I know that you all have been uh, instrumental in supporting the educational frameworks. So kind of talk to us about anything that's, that's on the horizon for Rev or Alive. So, so I'm going to keep a little bit of surprise uh, in, in the in the bag for now, but I can just show you. And as you said, yeah, when you talk about smart homes, we as, as a group of companies, <clears throat> overall for us, we want to ensure that that connectivity that we have, the, the lifestyle experiences that we have for our customers is, is across the entire spectrum. And so we are continuing to look at ways in terms of different unique ways how we can improve upon that. So uh, I'm not going to share just now. I know you're going to twist my arm as much as you can, but um, stay tuned for some exciting products and services coming from the group of companies. All right. Well, we are going to definitely stay tuned uh, for some exciting products and services to come from you. Uh, we're taking your word for it, Mr. Gomez, that you'll be back <laughs> when it's time to make those announcements. I'm not going to twist your arm too much today because it's so early on a Monday. I appreciate you. <laughs> all right, Mr. Gomez, any final words for us uh, this morning, uh, even just to your team as you all celebrate uh, this accomplishment? No, no, again, I mean, a shout out, to, as I said earlier, a shout out to all the teams across the group of companies. Um, and this is not just the technical teams, it's all the supporting teams across the entire business in terms of what they do on a consistent basis, just to ensure that our customers have a tremendous experience. But also I want to send a shout out to our customers as well, because they are the ones in terms of why we do this. And we'll continue to be there for them. We will continue to find ways how to improve upon our services and also to ensure that they have the best experience possible when it comes to uh, telecommunication services. 
Excellent. Mr. Gomez, we thank you so much for joining us this morning on Bahamas at Sunrise. Congratulations again to you and your team uh, for continually knocking it out of the park and certainly for winning these UCLA awards, which of course, as you mentioned, are prestigious, are worldwide, mark the global index. Congratulations for, for world class. That's what it is uh, you. to you and your team. Believe in best. We will continue to do in, so. Indeed, indeed. You're watching Bahamas at Sunrise, a live place and best. And of course, we're the best on television. So thank you for staying with us. We're going to be back in just a minute. In the Bahamas, small business is big business. More than 90% of the businesses in the Bahamas are classified as micro, small, or medium-sized enterprises, or MSMEs. The Access Accelerator Small Business Development Center was created to serve them. We at the Access Accelerator offer a variety of services to our clients. Business advisory services, training and entrepreneurial programming, mentorship and incubation, and advocacy. Join the Click is an initiative started by Cable Bahamas Business Solutions last year when we were trying to figure out how to help business leaders as well as consumers to stay connected. Working with Canoe, working with other partners, working with the government and my gateway to help them to connect with customers who want to place orders and want to be able to do things in a digital way. My gateway. My gateway is a groundbreaking portal through which Clients can request and pay for government services online. We have 28 services. We expect to increase the number of services to a minimum of 200. I, I love that we're helping uh, the government and helping the, our citizens to be more efficient and to use their time more wisely. I invite you to sign up for mygateway.gov.bs and let us make government work for you. Join the click. Welcome back to Bahamas at Sunrise. We're at the halfway point on this Good Friday. It's always tempting to say Fabulous Friday, but this, of course, is a Good Friday indeed. And we've still got more to come in the second half. We're going to be hearing about that construction program at BTVI. So if you know any people that are interested in upping their certifications and making sure that they can get jobs uh, in ongoing industries, you want to call them, tell them to watch Bahamas at Sunrise. We have more information for them. And of course, Ian Rogers will give us a preview of his presentation for the upcoming Aluka Business Outlook. Remember that you were invited to join us so you can go on over to tclevents.com if you do want to sign up. Before we continue, though, we need to make sure that if this weather is worthy of us teaching, whether it's today or Monday or any time over the weekend. So here is Godfrey Burnside with our second look at weather. Weather at Sunrise, brought to you by Bahamas First. What's first for you comes first for us. Pakistan, good morning, Bahamas. In your second look at weather, sunrise. High pressure continues to be the dominant across the islands with increasing conditions. But a frontal boundary to the north of the islands, along with tropical moisture, will elevate rain chances. In your rain forecast, Winds today southeasterly at 10 to 15 North Sea, 2 to 4 feet Northwest Bahamas. East to southeast at 15 to 20 North Sea, 4 to south feet of the central southeastern islands. On Saturday, east to southeast at 10 to 15 North Sea, 2 to 4 feet Northwest Bahamas. Easterly at 15 and 20 North Sea, 4 to 6 feet over the central and southeastern islands. Then on Sunday, those winds easterly at 10 to 15 North Sea, 2 to 4 feet Northwest and central Bahamas, with 15 20 North Sea, 4 to 6 feet. Over the southeastern islands. Yet tide. You can expect a high tide at 7:27 this morning. The next low tide being 1:41 this afternoon. High gain this evening at 7:52. Sunset is 7:32 this evening. Rising by 6:46. UVM at 7. Your water temperature 74 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and the moon phase is now moving towards the full moon. The external look, I start to continue to be the dominant, dominant weather feature for the weekend, but as cool, that front of boundary north of the islands will shift towards the south and move south of Grand Bahama, and that will increase our shower activity on Tuesday. So the time daytime will be in the upper 80s, at nighttime in the lower 70s. That's what's wrapping your fun. Look at the sunrise. I'm about to go inside. Back to you, Star. Welcome back to Bahamas at Sunrise. Beyond recovery into growth. That is the theme for the upcoming Aluta Business Outlook. And our next guest, Ian Rogers, is the owner of Bahamas B&Bs. He'll be speaking at the conference and letting us know a bit more about this exciting uh, offer that he has. And this morning, he gives us a sneak peek of what we can expect. Ian, good morning and welcome to Bahamas at Sunrise. Good morning. Thank you for having me today. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, let's talk a bit about you and, and how you got into this. Uh, tell us a little, a little bit about your background in tourism. Sure. So I'm from Governor's Harbor, Eleuthera. And so you can't really grow up in the Bahamas and not be surrounded by tourism. But I also grew up um, volunteering at a local library, Haynes Library in Governor's Harbor, helping out at all of their events and kids programming and other activities. So that kind of created an attraction to like customer service, hospitality, tourism for me. And so from then I went on to study hospitality in England um, and followed that by getting my degree in media studies at the University of Brighton. And then after that, I worked for the Ministry of Tourism in London, promoting my home, the Bahamas, to Europeans for about five years. And all of that kind of led up to um, creating Bahamas b and All right. So let's talk about Bahamas b and oh, What is it exactly? Sure. So Bahamas b and is a Bahamian-owned and created company. We are a new online rental marketplace that promotes first class vacation rental properties and experiences on all islands of the Bahamas. The company was kind of uh, born from the desire to keep it local while providing excellent service for a more deeper, authentic visitor experience. Being a homeowner and using other like global platforms to list properties, um, created a demand in ourselves to find an alternative that is specifically created to showcase only Bahamian properties so that our Bahamian culture could be upfront, something that other global websites just can't do. Uh, we also offer more information for the tourists and lower fees at 2% or an annual fee for the hosts offering their accommodation and lower fees for the visitors who are looking for a once in a lifetime vacation. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So what is the rental market like in Aleuthor? I hear it's hot, but you tell me from your side, what is it like right now? Yeah, the rental market in Eleuthera is booming. I am very happy to say it is busy. You ask anybody on Eleuthera and they will say it's the busiest they've ever seen it. But also statistics are showing that Eleuthera is in the top for demand on vacation rental properties. And you'll see every kind of tourists from couples to families. And it's not just foreigners, like domestic tourism is a very large part of that as well. Yeah, indeed it is. Indeed it is. I always look forward to coming in at least twice a year. Um, absolutely love, love Eleuthera. Uh, what kind of properties are visitors looking for? So visitors are looking for all kinds of listings. The advantages of Eleuthera are that we have a multitude of options available from inexpensive apartments to cute villas to huge eight bedroom beach houses. And looking at current trends, the majority of bookings are for like two to three bedrooms but with a growing demand for four bedroom accommodations and luxury homes. Okay, all right. So for people who are looking to invest in Eleuthera, that's the type of information that they need to know in terms of what they ought to be building. Um, you know, we talk about this uh, Bahamas B&B bread and breakfast style. Uh, have that, has that become more desired than hotels and resorts? And if so, uh, what are the benefits of going into this sort of industry? Um, and then what are the challenges? Sure. So I wouldn't say vacation rental properties are more desirable. They are just um, fewer resorts and hotels on the island. In central Eleuthera, there are about three that would fit into the resort hotel category. So it just comes down to availability. Like during the pandemic, all the hotels were shut down. And so the only option was a rental property. 
And even when the hotels reopened, a lot of people just didn't want to go back to those big properties surrounded by lots of people. Mm -hmm. And so they would just book, book a little villa on the beach or an apartment and have like seclusion. And that mentality has just carried on. But there will always be people who prefer hotels. And that's mm -hmm. why as a whole tourism, um, the tourism market for the Bahamas is just on the up. The only challenge I see is, do we have enough rooms for the growing demand? Mm, yeah, so this is where the conversation comes back again. So this is a good time to be investing in property in Eleuthera, um, and especially, you know, doing these sorts of properties that you can be listed on Bahamas B&B, because there's always going to be the demand for it. Eleuthera is hot, 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 as they say. All right, what do you hope people will take away from your presentation at the Business Outlook? I hope people who see my presentation at the Luther Business Outlook 2022 learn a bit more about Bahamas BNBs, who we are, what we do, and how we want to showcase uh, Bahamian culture on a global scale. We also hope they can know that uh, Bahamas BNBs is open. We've launched recently, and we're open to registration for vacation rental properties now at BahamasBNBs.com. But also hope that they will learn a bit more about what's happening in the vacation rental market at the moment and how viable it is for the future of tourism. Excellent. I'm looking forward to the presentation, looking forward to learning a lot more. Uh, for anybody that does not know, right, I don't know which Bahamian is under a rock, but it might happen. Uh, some of our viewing audience may not know. Tell us why Eleuthera is so special. Sure. So I promoted the Bahamas in a lot of countries across Europe, and I would always describe each of the islands and by the end of it, I would always get the question, OK, but what's your favorite island in the Bahamas? And I would have to say, well, I'm a bit biased because I have to say my home of Eleuthera, you know, and the beauty of Eleuthera is that it's the like, perfect balance of seclusion, but with enough activities and attractions so you will never get bored from the picturesque pink sand beaches, which you're never too far away from or just having a lazy drive up the long stretch of the island, kind of exploring the little settlements to the people. You know, Eleutherans are the most welcoming people you'll find anywhere in the world. It truly is just the perfect Bahamas vacation spot. Yeah, I, I wish, I wish I, you know, I'm biased too. So I, I don't know if they got cut off my mic now, but you know, I just happen to love that place. My mom, of course, being up from North and the Bluff, and I just think it is the most beautiful, serene, a perfect blend of city and seclusion. Um, so many exciting natural wonders to embrace yeah. on that island alone. Um, and so, yeah, I, you know, they can cut me anytime because I, I'm only going to echo your <laughs> sentiment. Uh, certainly the country at large is, is phenomenal though. And I really want to encourage people to attend the Luther Business Outlook happening on Thursday, April 28th. One, you'll get to, to meet Ian in person, learn more about Bahamas BNB, but also you get to see whether or not this is a place you want to invest in or you get to think about other opportunities in the other islands as well. Uh, because now is certainly the time. So Ian, thank you so much for joining us on Bahamas with Sunrise. Congratulations on the launch of Bahamas BNB. Looking forward to seeing it continue to grow, not just in Eleuthera, but nationwide. Congratulations to you. Thank you so much. You have a good day. You do the same. You're watching Bahamas at Sunrise. Remember that you can register to attend the Bahamas Business Outlook in Eleuthera Thursday, April 28th at tclevents.com. We're going to be back with more in just a minute. One thing, two things, blue thing, old things, things that are small, things that are grand, things that fit just right in the palm of your hand. Fox Hill Nursery, a large selection of garden supplies. If you can see it in your mind, you can find it at Fox Hill Nursery. Construction is on the rise in the Bahamas, and BTVI can give you all of the tools you need to join this exciting trade. Here's our Suzette Parker with that story. 
BTVI boasts a comprehensive construction and mechanical program. A construction program covers all areas of construction as we know in the field from excavation to completion. And the mechanical program will cover the welding department along with the automotive department. Students can choose specific courses or master the entire program. In plumbing, you can go as far as being a journeyman, which means you complete the entire program, whereas you, if you do, let's say, just the first level of plumbing, you're more of an apprentice or a helper. And so here at BTVI, we don't just um, encourage persons to be helpers. We encourage them to be entrepreneurs in all areas, carpentry, welding, plumbing, masonry, drywall, you can master anyone. Now, if you master all, then you can go on a, on a be a project manager where you can look, um, oversee the entire project. The automotive program is expanding to include training to become an auto technician. You, you, what you're going to see beginning in the fall, um, we know, we're not just going to produce um, um, mechanics, or, uh, you know, when you think of a mechanic, people think about grease, getting dirty. No, we're going to produce um, automotive technicians. It's a difference. Um, today's vehicle has more than 24 onboard computers. You have to be able to diagnose those. Mr. Archer mentioned that, okay, working along in electronics, you must be, you have um, a, a, a databases that you have to access. You're talking about um, access, let's say, a 2020 vehicle. It has a server and workstations. People don't know that. Okay, and so you just can't carry your vehicle anywhere. Okay, so BTVI I will be offering um, in the automotive department. We will be, you look at um, scan tool diagnosis. Uh, uh, then you have your, for instance, you have a, a, a machine called a lab scope that you, Mr. Archer would work with. There's a lab scope for vehicles, okay, where you can diagnose effectively and that's what BTVI is doing. I don't think you should have to graduate from BTVI and go to the United States to take up the exact same courses or subjects that we're offering. And so BTVI is going to that point where you don't have to do that. When you leave here, you can go there and you, when you present yourself, you, you, you are certified in the area. We also have certification for auto, you know, the ASC, the Automotive Service Excellence that's through the United States. You can take that even as a student at BTVI. And then when you complete it, you can become a certified technician in all eight areas that's, that's taught in the automotive area. And so you may say, I, um, I just want to work on brakes. You can become a brake specialist. And we will be giving Bahamians this opportunity to enhance themselves and to be well skilled, especially when, when we, we're going to do a, um, a demonstration uh, to show persons lab scope strategies, okay? A lab scope is simply an electronic device. You hook up to the vehicle and it gives you wave patterns. You, well, you know what the EKG machine does. It's the exact same patterns that you can, that, that you'll see. So it can tell you if a, if a sensor is bad, it can only show you what's there. We, we, that's what we want to produce here, all right? Top level technicians, um, person in the construction, top level. Construction and mechanical courses are available virtually online. Um, right now we have students in Andrus, Eleuthera, Abaco, Moors Island, okay, that small um, fishing community. We have, we have them there. And well, but the thing about it is, we say, well, how can they get their practical work at the online? We have relationships with companies. We send them the outline of what the student is able to do and they do the assessment for us uh, on the different family islands. And so they don't lose out on the hands-on. A program can be completed in as little as three semesters. If you choose uh, the welding department, you know, that, that you take, well, depending on the entry level, let's say you're a student that did not complete high school, we won't turn you away. You have a tech prep program in all areas that will bring you up to that level where you can then go into the program we don't turn anyone away. Um, same thing with, um, with construction, tech prep. If you're not able, then we make sure you, you're brought up to standard. Uh, one of the first things you complete here at BTVI in the trades, your safety. 
OSHA safety. You're not allowed to do any practical application unless you complete safety, safety first. Industry certification is available for these courses and more. We at BTBI, we don't just give you a certificate. You have an opportunity to be certified in all areas. Um, one of the things we, like we have here, the NCCR program, the National Center for Construction and Education Research, which is a worldwide um, recognized program in construction. Um, with that, you know, once you complete that, you can go anywhere and apply for job and share certification. All right. Also, what we will continue to push is city and guilds. BTVI offers city and guilds certification in all areas, not just construction, mechanical, also business, cosmetology. Even uh, if you want to be a, you can be a certified maid in a hotel. If you you can come to BTVI and receive that um, in city and guilds. Some people pursue construction skills to use in other careers. We have a female student, okay, who came and she is actually in the construction, but she is she is not. Um, um, doing that to go then work in the construction industry. She has a business, okay, where when she set up a backdrop, she wanna do her own lighting, so she's doing electrical. She wanna build her own design, so she's doing carpentry, both at the same time. So that's what we have here. So you, you don't have to go in construction to go then lift blocks. No. No, you can use it in, in, in all different areas. You know, but I saw persons do plumbing. So why we do plumbing? Because they want to learn journey with the pipes. And they design stuff with the pipes. Interesting, eh? Mm -hmm. But that's what we do here at BTVI. BTVI students gain real world experience. We just formed a relationship with our work homes. Okay, our work homes are taking our students right now. Okay, if you go there tomorrow morning, 9.30, you'll find BTVI students that are not, that haven't even reached the level where they are during their uh, internship, but they desire to learn more. Um, so they go into our work homes, okay, where they, they're assisting in all areas of the project. If you go down south, you know, down in Pineville Gardens, and that's exactly where the project is. And so we, we like to thank our work homes for allowing our students to, to come there and receive um, the training that they, that they need. Roker highly recommends BTVI. Uh, BTVI, we take pride in, in what we do. All right? We take pride. And we have uh, uh, instructors here that take pride in their lecturing and ensuring that the students who are our clients, you know, we don't, if we don't have clients, we have no BTVI. And so we take pride in lecturing to our clients, ensuring that when they leave here, they represent us. Like myself, I pour myself into my students. Why? If I die, I can't take that with me. And when they go there, who they represent? Me. For Bahamas at Sunrise, this is Suzette Park. Sports we play depend on the health we build. So let's stay healthy. Wear a mask and practice social distancing and hand washing to protect yourself and others. Remember, COVID-19 is not a game. A public service message from the Bahamas Olympic Committee. Well, that's going to do it for us, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Bahamas at Sunrise. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. We wish you a wonderful and a safe, safe weekend. If you are going to head out to the beaches this weekend, please make sure that you are watching and covering your children. Please make sure that you are taking care of yourself. Do enjoy. We'll be back with more on Monday. Bye.